Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications. Ron Murinaka woke up one morning to find his backyard had disappeared. Where it had been the night before was a 40-foot cliff. In the seven years since Ron had bought his beautiful ranch home, there had been signs of trouble. The driveway had split apart, the living room walls had separated, and all of the door frames had warped. But nothing had prepared him for the transformation of his backyard into a cliff. It turns out that a fault line ran right under Ron Muranaka's house. The very ground beneath his feet was completely unstable. This despite the fact that California law prohibits building homes within 50 feet of a fault line. So how did this home get built? Well, the story involves a less than ethical developer and a city official with a conflict of interest. But more on this later. For this case study is a clear example of why an accurate geotechnical study is vital whenever a property is developed. So if you are thinking of buying land in order to build a home, here are some of the top things you should know about geotechnical studies. Number one, a geotechnical study or survey is the very first step in the construction or consolidation of a site. It typically involves drilling borings in multiple locations on the property, taking soil and water samples from these borings, and testing the samples in a laboratory. Number two, a geotechnical survey is necessary in order to design a foundation. This is because the laboratory analysis of soil samples will provide key information about soil consistency and structure, as well as groundwater levels that lead to recommendations for the technical project. Number three, a geotechnical investigation may involve the following. The identification of the type, strength, and density of the soil, the depth to bedrock and groundwater, a landslide hazard study, a geological hazard study, foundation design recommendations, and solutions for foreseeable problems. Now, a geotechnical study is usually required whenever you are submitting a project or development plan to the local jurisdiction for a permit, and each local jurisdiction will have different requirements for the geotechnical investigation. So the actual components will vary from place to place. Number four. A geotechnical survey costs between $1,000 and $5,000 on average. And the exact cost depends on the size of the site and the number of borings that will be required by your jurisdiction. And number five, a geotechnical report will provide recommendations if the report discovers there's poor soil. And these recommendations may include draining groundwater if the water table is found to be very close to the surface, installing wider or deeper foundations if the soil strength is low, using alternate forms of cement to help combat corrosive soil, replacing pockets of bad soil, reinforcing dangerous slopes, regrading the site to redirect water and improve drainage, and in a worst case scenario, avoiding construction in certain areas as should have been determined in the geotechnical survey for Ron Muranaka's site. So how is it possible that a house on such a dangerous site was allowed to be built? Well, as it turns out, the developer's original geotechnical consultant had flagged the fault line, but the developer simply fired this consultant and hired another, one who was willing to state that homes could be built over the fault. Even worse, the city not only didn't catch the fault line in their review of the development, but allowed the developer to remove reference to an active fault in the sales disclosure. Perhaps the city didn't have the resources to check the geotechnical engineer's work, but the lawyers for the Muranakas and other residents pointed out that a former assistant city manager had been hired by the developer less than a year after leaving his position with the city, and it was this person who had lobbied for the removal of the disclosure language. In addition, the city attorney overseeing the approval process also worked for one of the development company's main partners. But regardless of whether active double dealing was involved, the end result was a cliff in Ron Muranaka's backyard. Sadly, this is a study in why it's important to do a thorough review process yourself whenever buying land. And if you plan to build a house on your property, be sure to take a conservative approach. Don't shop around until you find a professional who will tell you what you want to hear. Now, do you have any stories on geotechnical investigations? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. 
We'll make you a land due diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com slash glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down properties at gokchecapital.com slash listings. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening, and more to come. Thank you.